This is the story of McKinney Golden's 2022 litters, totaling 19 puppies. It all began with an American field golden named Snickers. Cooper came to visit one day. He's an English cream golden retriever, a show and advertising dog belonging to Jeff Sullivan at Fort Worth Goldens. We kept Pinkie Pie from that first litter of nine puppies from Cooper and Snickers. She inherited all of Cooper's good looks. Two years later, we got Bailey Grace, the daughter of Cooper and Melanie, who was a grief counseling golden retriever. We began breeding golden retrievers at Moomoo Farms, our ranch for breeding miniature longhorn calves. Moomoo is the brown calf. Moomoo Farms is named after this calf, Moomoo, and Amy loved Moomoo the most. For a while, we had CJ and Commander, a pair of boarding horses that stayed with us. They were quite comfortable on the farm and often would ask to come in for some kind of a snack. Gunner, a stud dog from Houston, was bred to Bink Pinkie Pie in June of 2022. Amy worked very hard to find genetically pure and ick-free studs. Here she found our 22-22 sire Dallas that we bred to Bailey Grace. As we approached their due dates, we got x-rays and we could see Tummies full of puppies. Right on time, Pinkie Pie started labor on August the 17th, 2022, and she woke us up around 2 a.m. Here's the live video. So the first girl was born at 2.23 a.m. The next little girl, just a few minutes later, on 2.31 p.m., So this is technically her gestation was exactly 60 days just, and she started her water broke around 2.20. She woke me up. Pinkie Pie woke me up and she was breathing hard and went to sleep around 11.30 and, she, and then she woke us up at maybe 2.15. She went outside to take a potty break. She ran inside. She was very insistent that she go back to her birthing pool, her birthing nest. And she had the first puppy within five minutes of laying back down. This is Pinky and her first two puppies, two little girls. Uh oh, we got another one. Uh -oh. One dark, one medium. Oh, she's starting okay. labor again. Okay. Oh, we... Number three's coming. We really need to clean back. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Well, here we are at 5.30 in the morning. We've got five puppies birthed. We have two boys and three girls and she's still pushing hard trying to get puppy number six out so I think we sh we have at least eight puppies so we have three left to go so we're waiting for number six and we have five gorgeous big fat puppies Another push. 
Boy, she's pushing about every, about every 10 seconds. Oh, a bunch of blood came out. Yeah. Which one, red or? Red or... And Bailey Grace was about three or four days behind Pinkie Pie. Here she is very, very pregnant just before labor. Now Bailey Grace had 12 puppies. They came so fast every five minutes, the first 11 or so, that we just had no time for video. And then we were exhausted and didn't want to take any video and we were trying to sleep uh, a little bit before the last puppy came. Both litters spent their first two weeks in sleeping in our master bedroom with us because Amy was very protective. Because there were 12 of them, Bailey's puppies were generally a little bit smaller than Pinkie Pie's puppies, a little less than a pound, whereas Pinkie's were all a pound or more. And this is the smallest runt of the litter, a little girl that Amy named Apple, whose owner Dave renamed Rose. Now, because this was Bailey's first litter and because she had 12 puppies, and only 10 nipples, she didn't have enough milk to feed all 12 puppies. So we gave three of her puppies to Pinkie Pie to raise because Pinkie Pie had 10 nipples and 10 puppies, and that balanced it out quite nicely. Pinkie Pie's had plenty of milk, and so she was able to nurse 10 puppies, and that left Bailey with nine, and everybody was happy. We put a special colored collar on every single puppy so we could keep them all straight. We kept Pinkie Pie's puppies and Bailey's puppies all identified by collars with records identifying the sex, the color, and the collar color. And here you see uh, Bailey's three puppies mixed with Pinkie Pie's uh, eight puppies. and. Uh, and they're all playing together quite nicely. They are three weeks old here. At three weeks, their eyes are starting to open and their ears aren't quite open yet. They can notice movement, but really can't see sharply or focus. Little puppies get pretty stinky, and so in about two weeks they get their first bath, their first warm bath, and they seem to like it okay. They don't complain much. It uh, starts a lifetime of them being used to nice warm baths. All of our adult dogs love their warm bath, and uh, sometimes we just have to kick them out of the bathroom because they want one. All right, monkey. 
Our fur is different than the rest of them. It's fluffier. She's also he heavier than the other two girls. Say hi. Here's a picture of all 19 puppies, almost three weeks old. Their eyes are opening at this point, but their ears are still not open. They can hear a little bit, but they can't hear directionally yet. Okay, this is what 19 puppies look like. More like. As you can see, you can tell my apple. And then you can tell Nugget Jr. And there's Pinky and Bailey. But 19 puppies. Now they got a pee everywhere. Literally, what they did, they woke up and they started peeing. Good girl, Apple. There you go. Get those, those legs up. Yes, get the legs up, Apple. Good girl. Here you can see the work that it takes to raise puppies. Um, I know you see a lot of spots on these pads, but these pads are changed at least three times a day. Uh, this is how much uh, cleaning it takes. Uh, the uh, brown, uh, brown pad there gets changed at least twice a day. All the pink pads get changed three or more. Right around three and a half weeks, we start supplementing them with goat milk because at this point, that many puppies are overwhelming their mother's ability to produce. Amy started doing photo shoots for advertising on the website. At about one month old, they start being able to play outside. Grandma Snickers is doing a good job keeping them off. Dr. Crud. These are just gross now. <laughs> my milk, my milk, my milk. <laughs> oh no, Amazon. <laughs> Snickers doesn't care. Oh, yeah, well Snickers is too busy cleaning puppies. Put that out a little bit. There's poop right to your right. Oh, thank you. Yes, that is poop. <laughs> Snickers, that's nasty. Hey, somebody right there. Oh, nope. Oh, Snickers. Hi, little one. Here's 
These puppies are growing fast now. They're uh, coming on a month old and they eat enormous amounts of food, goat milk and puppy chow at least three times a day, plus mother's milk. Nineteen puppies competing for ten slots. <laughs> <laughs> At one month old, we started feeding him solid food. This is American Journey, puppy chow, chicken, and okay. sweet potato. And both mamas would just nurse any puppy that happened to come along. So I'm not sure they knew who their puppies were sometimes because here's one of Pinkie Pie's puppies nursing on Bailey. They started getting solid food at about a month old. You can see here we've mixed goat milk and puppy chow. Unlike the stereotypical puppy mill puppies that are raised in cages and sometimes dirt floors and overcrowded conditions, often inbred so that they have a lot of genetic or uh, other issues like ick or joint problems, uh, hearing, eye issues. These puppies uh, don't resemble any of that. They're raised at home in a very clean environment uh, with lots of uh, tender loving care, very good food, um, and uh, overseen by a vet. And so this is uh, the opposite of a puppy mill puppy. These are genetically uh, pure. They are Ow. defect free. We very carefully choose the stud to make sure that uh, he is very high quality genetically and uh, health wise. And we make sure also that there is zero inbreeding in the two, in the line of the sire and the dam, there's absolutely no intersection of, uh, of uh, genetics. So, so that way we ensure that these puppies uh, are the highest quality that could possibly be bred at a very affordable price.
They're growing so fast that we have to check their collars and loosen them every few days. And this is Penny. Amy wanted to keep Penny because she just couldn't let her go. And Pinkie Pie says, no, I really, don't, don't want like you that. nursing because you have teeth. Don't be on the carpet. Look how gently Bailey plays with her puppy. She, she's just rough enough with them to show him who's boss, but she doesn't hurt him. She knows how to play just rough enough for them so they like it and will play back, but she's very gentle. And Pinkie Pie is the same way. She very gently lets the puppies climb all over her, quite patient with them. Sophie was one of Amy's favorites. She was later renamed by her owner to Zelda. The puppies loved playing in this ball pit. So by the five and six week old time period now, they are in a regular schedule. We keep them on a schedule because that uh, helps to regulate their diet and gives them a predictable environment, which they really like. And uh, so we, they wake us up with uh, crying for food at about 7 a.m. And then uh, by 7.30 or so, well, we first of all, we put them all outside because they love eating outside, and uh, it's a lot less messy than trying to feed them indoors now. Uh, they make a lot of pee and poop, and then we want to encourage them to learn to pee and poop in the yard, which is where the be we're essentially beginning their potty training, right? They learn to potty on pee pads in the house, uh, in their little pen, and now we're teaching them to go potty out in the yard, which you want them to learn that that's the best place to go. And uh, so we let them out at uh, about 7 a.m. We feed them. They're fed by about 7.30. They play for a couple of hours, and then they're all tuckered out, and they sleep until about 11 or 12, and then we wake them up for lunch. And, of course, when they go to sleep, we carry them back in the house. They sleep very safely in their pen. Um, you know, especially if it's raining or something. And, uh, and then by noon, they're hungry again, so we take them back outside, we feed them, 
they play until about 1, 1 30 and they all fall asleep because now it's warm and they're very cozy. And sometimes we let them sleep in the porch uh, if the weather's nice and it's cool. Uh, if it's too hot, we bring them back in so they can have the, the, cool, uh, the coolness uh, in the afternoon in the house. But if it's a shady, cool, windy day, then maybe we'll let, leave them stay outside to sleep. So uh, they sleep until about 5, eight, uh, 5 p.m. and then we wake them up. They wake up again, and now they're hungry again. So we feed them again, and uh, and then they play and go back to sleep. And then what you're seeing in this video here is where they're playing before bed because we want them to sleep all night. And so between about nine and ten, they get a last evening play in their ball pen where they can chew on each other and play with their toys. They have lots of toys, not only this ball pen, but they have a, a truck, and they have a wagon, and lots of stuffed animals, so lots and lots to occupy them and stay with them. And uh, so then, uh, then they're tired and sleepy by, by about 10, 10.30, and we put them in their pen for the night, and they sleep all night because they're nice and full, and worn out from lots of hard play and that's how the day goes day after day after day for their uh, for weeks five and six and seven and then uh, and at the end of week seven they get their last shots and people start picking them up and so that's that's the schedule of puppy raising it's like raising 19 infants to toddlerhood in just seven weeks And eventually in the evening, they start wearing out and passing out. And then we know it's bedtime. And they go inside. And the day starts over again in the morning. And they play and play. Puppies, puppies everywhere as far as the eye can see.
One of the surprising things about Puppy is how much they love toys. They played in this wagon for hours and with their dump truck and with all their plushy toys. And they just love anything they can drag around. You can just hear them telling each other, this is my wagon, no, it's my wagon, no, my wagon, get off my wagon. Now, how do I make this thing go? I, I remember there's, there's some way I can make this thing go. By the time they were five weeks old, they would just alternate between moms, whoever had enough room to fit another puppy. So here we have 19 puppies. And this is how we got out. Every afternoon, every evening, every morning, we'd lift up the gate yeah. in the kitchen and we would Mom have daily. a herd of 19 puppies come out. And then of course they would fall asleep and we'd carry 19 puppies back into their pen about three times a day. And here's one of the last days before moms and dads came to pick up their puppies. This was kind of a bittersweet time because we knew that in the next few days they'd all be gone. And so we took advantage of it, took some great pictures. This is their last vet visit where they're getting their shots and microchips just before people start picking them up. And after their vet visit, families started picking up their boys and girls to take home. One of the beautiful things about raising these puppies is that so many of them went to children with children and families or to couples who were pregnant and expecting their first child. Um, lots of people say we just want to raise our child with a golden retriever because that's how we were raised. And with this litter we now have about 40 families that have taken home some of our puppies and we love to get Christmas and holiday photos from them. And with the puppies all gone, we took away the, the puppy pen and, uh, and now Penny is the last remaining puppy at home. We love to get videos like this from people who take home a puppy and continue to say, send us videos and photos. Oh, I wish she could polish the floor for me, but... <laughs> she could also do other things to your floor, too.
the last two puppies to go home were Zelda and Charlie. So we took Zelda, Charlie, and Penny to the beach. And on the way, we stopped at Bucky's in Temple, Texas to drop off Huck with his new mom. And here are Penny and Zelda playing at the house in South Padre Island. Not sleepy. We took Not four dogs, two puppies, and Say, two We've been mamas. sleeping in the car for the past 12 we hours. Good time at the beach. Hey, I'm gonna tear up the kitchen. If you ever stop in at McKinney, make sure that you visit the Cocktail Creamery. You might remember Little Apple, the runt. Well, here she is on the right at 65 pounds at eight months old with Charlie, her brother. One of our puppies, Little Emmy, went on to become an Instagram star. Sweet Golden Emmy is now an influencer on Instagram. You can find her at Sweet Golden Emmy. Amy and I didn't know when we started this journey that we'd be blessing so many families with these incredibly sweet, good-natured, happy dogs. They brighten up the lives of so many people. Don't forget to like this video and please subscribe.